Blimey, Gary, where do we start with that one, eh? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a phenomenal game of football, I think. The, the pitch, the, the wet pitch the under the lights, I think it was set up probably from the start for a, for a game like that. And incredible that we have found the, the energy, the desire, the quality to, to come out on top. You promised them a, a Christmas present of three points on, on Boxing Day. I'm sure the City fans will give, forgive you for it being a few days late. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think, you know, four points in the two games, it's, it's a good tally. Uh, we have to recover uh, from, a, from a huge effort physically uh, very quickly for Sunday because it's another huge game. But uh, that feeling at the end, I just said to the players, that is why we work, that is why we sacrifice a lot of things for moments like that to, to stand in front of our you know, incredible supporters and, and celebrate with them. Let's, let's try to go through this chrono chronologically, if I can even remember what <laughs> chronologically is. Um, one nil up, excellent goal. Um, you must have been pleased with how we started the game. Yeah, I thought we started the game brilliant in terms of where we wanted to play, how we felt we could hurt them, uh, the way they set up with the diamond. When we won it and, and played to our wing-backs and, and slid balls down the side, we, we caused them all sorts of problems and scored one goal, could have scored two. Sam was, was clean through, then had a header as well. And, he was a constant threat on the last line with his pace and his power and uh, really felt we, we started the game well and deserved, like I said, to, to be in front and, and could have been more. An, an outstanding finish from Sam as well. And look, he's had to be patient. He's been on the bench for the last few games. He was clearly tr maybe trying to prove some kind of point or something like that. And I mean, he's grabbed his chance with both hands, hasn't he? Yeah, I keep saying that to players when, when I leave them out. It's, for me, it's the hardest part of my job to leave uh, good people and good players out the team. Uh, but. I have to pick a team, you know, for each game, and uh, Sam has, has probably been a bit unfortunate to, to, to not play some games recently, and uh, with his illness a few a few weeks ago, it's kind of held him back again over the Christmas period. But for him to come in tonight and, and produce that performance, it's a quality I knew he had, uh, and, and like I say, when he is out the team, if if I give you that motivation to prove me wrong, then then go and do it on the pitch. So uh, I'm delighted he did tonight. And then really the perfect time to score is, is in first half stoppage time. Going in 2-0, you must have been re really pleased with, with um, how we went into half time. Yeah, I thought we deserved that though. I thought the chances we created, uh, the game became a bit scrappy. I thought the ref started giving a lot of fouls for, for what he wasn't early in the game. I think it was, it was a centre forward and a centre half competing and, and they seemed to get a lot of the fouls at that time. And, we lost our momentum at that period, but we, we scored against the run of play later on, which gave us a cushion, I think, a first half performance deserved. And I'm not sure if it was, was mind games, but Bristol Rovers came back out in their home kit for the, for the start of the second half, and they say 2-0 is a dangerous scoreline, and, and we found that out, unfortunately, didn't we? It was uh, not, the, not the greatest of starts to the second half. No, it wasn't, and I thought, I thought their changes, if anything, made the game easier for us. I felt like... Uh, the, 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 the wide, uh, well the number 10 and the wide uh, 21, can't remember his name, but they were, they were causing us problems with the rotations that they had and uh, if anything the changes going matching up against us made the game simpler for us. There was no, no passing on of men, it was man for man and we had to just see out our, kind of do our jobs and see out that period and, and we didn't defend well in that period, we didn't keep the ball, I think which is even more important. We, we turned them when we needed to play more passes and be uh, show more bravery in possession, uh, and the game totally turned with with three quick goals, uh, and and the atmosphere in here changed. You talk about the atmosphere; it did feel like those home fans, much like the Big Bank does at SJP. It was sucking that ball in, and we didn't look ourselves defensively at all. And Bristol Rovers probably felt that a little bit and, and, and acted on it. Yeah, I think those periods we have to see out. You know, that's that's something since I've came in. That's something before I came in. I think that was was a problem. We still have to to be better at that. We we need to defend better. We need to keep the ball better and keep the ball in in good areas. Uh, and and we didn't do that. And we we paid the price. They they were a threat. They they started putting the ball in our box and causing us problems. Uh, and that is something that you know, whilst we've won the game, we we have to learn lessons from the game and take things from the game to be better as well. I have an admission to make. I, I text Scott with about 15 minutes of the game to go and I said, blimey, this interview with Gary is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> then, all help, say, <laughs> then all hell broke loose at the end, didn't it? I mean, what a reaction for the... They, you know, you shoved on Stano, you had the, the three boys up front. We threw everything at it and, and uh, you know, made the most of their mistakes, mopped up and, and got the job done. Yeah, I think the big gamble was that Tim Dien coming on for 
uh, check. I think we, we changed to a four at that point and, and really gambled the game. We became pretty open, but uh, it gave us an extra man attacking with, with Tim getting in the box and, and he got his goal. Uh, and then we looked a real threat on the counter-attack with, with Norms and Stano coming in from wide areas and Giovanni picking the ball up in, in that kind of half space in between lines. Uh, and, and yeah, it was... I think at that point it wasn't tactical, it was it was kind of all hands to the pump and, and everyone trying to get back in the game and then I felt when we scored the goal it would have been easy for us then to, to sit off the game but we didn't, we, we kept going and, and deserved the winner in the end. And I think it always felt at 3-0, I, I, I said it myself, I thought there's, there's still another goal in this. Well, Kev said that at one point when, <laughs> I think it was when Stano missed his chance, he said the problem is there's another goal in this. And, in fairness, it could have went either way because the game was so open at that point. But I always felt with Stano and, and Norms on the last line that we we had the, the beating of their two centre backs, and, and that proved to be the case with the winner. And when Sam headed that ball over the goalkeeper, time just seemed to stop, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, it felt like five minutes. <laughs> I actually said, I said it was summers up if there was a puddle on the line and it and it stopped. Uh, but fortunately, it just had enough legs to, to get over the line and. Uh, an amazing feeling uh, to, to win a game of football in, in those circumstances and I said to the boys in there that like I said this is why we work this is what we do it for and we have to enjoy these moments we have to use this as a fuel to, to motivate us and to keep us you know going for the next game and the next game because uh, at, at their best they, they are a very dangerous team in this league. I'm sure you, you probably have already thought of this, but your three wins as manager, all three games have been won in stoppage time. So it's a good <laughs> good habit to have. I'd, like I said, I'd, I'll, I'll have a head like Kev soon if, if we keep going like this. But uh, it's a good habit to have. But, I, but I, I did say to the players, you know, I'd love just a 2-0 victory and just be calm second half and keep the ball. And, you know, if, if we are going to improve as a team, we have to learn lessons. Even when we win, I think... When we lose, it's it's easy to analyse and, and and make improvements. But uh, I'm a big believer in when we win, we have to make improvements as well. So tonight won't be a uh, you know we've won and everything's okay. We we discuss a lot with the players about process and sticking to the process, and that will will get us results. So uh, we have to analyse this and and pick out the little bits we can improve and be better at. Is this the result that the performances of the last five to six weeks has been working towards? Yeah, I think so. I think we have been hard done by with, with some results over the last uh, probably three or four weeks. Uh, but that's football. And, and like I say to the players, we have to stick to the process. You know, the outcome, I don't think we can affect. I think you see today, you know, football is a crazy game at times. So we have to stick to our process and what we believe in and keep doing that. And if, if we do, I believe we'll get positive results. Does it, you can't just say it, but does this almost feel like a turning point? I don't think so. I don't think there kind of needs to be a turning point. I think we are, you know, very much a work in progress. I've only been been in here a, a short space of time. There has been a lot of changes within the football club, not just myself. So, I think the players are starting to get used to us. I think the players uh, enjoy what they do and they're enjoying the changes that we're making. And I think you can see certain things are coming. Other things, obviously. Uh, like I said about defending and, and seeing the game out with, with more control and, and possession we have to be better but uh, it's very much a work in progress and it will continue to be that for, for a while now but I think the players needed that victory for uh, that confirmation of what they are doing is right so I think it's big for, for their uh, state of mind really moving forward in, in, in the next game. And that next game is Oxford away. What, what a result to take into that game. And I think we were all hurting after that FA Cup defeat at Oxford a few weeks ago. I mean, it's about making amends for that one and building on this. Yeah, as it's recovering. First and foremost, I always say after games, you know, we have to be professional. The players have to recover. Uh, tomorrow and what day is it? Saturday? Before, <laughs> you before summed up the, Christmas there, yeah. yeah. Before the game on Sunday. So we, we have to recover and make sure everyone is ready, see where the players are physically. Uh, and then pick a team to, to go to Oxford and try and win a game. They've beat us twice this season, so we know it's going to be difficult, but uh, like I said, at our very best, then we're a dangerous football team. Thanks a lot, Gary. I think we're all off for a lie down now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gary, just